Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson four, increasing and decreasing functions. So the classwork here says, graphs are useful tools in terms of representing data. They provide a visual story highlighting important facts that surround the relationship between the quantities. The graph of a linear function is a line. The slope of the line can provide useful information about the functional relationship between the two types of quantities. So a linear function whose graph has a positive slope is said to be an increasing function. So that'd be going up from left to right. A linear function whose graph has a negative slope is said to be a decreasing function. So that would be going down from left to right. And a linear function whose graph has a zero slope is said to be a constant function. So that'd be an equation that would be y equals some number. Okay, exercise one. Read through each of the scenarios and choose the graph of the function that best matches the situation. Explain the reason behind each choice. Okay, so this is a matching game. So if I look at this first scenario, I am looking at a constant function, okay? As I said up above, if there is, if the slope is zero, then it is a constant function. So which scenario is this? This one is at a constant rate of 1.7 gallons per minute. The bathtub is filled, that's an increasing function. The bathtub is drained is a decreasing function. The bathtub contains two and a half gallons of water and it's not being filled or drained, so that's constant. And then a bathtub is filled at a constant rate of two and a half gallons per minute is also positive. So just looking at this, amount of water in the tub in gallons and time, well, as time goes by, the amount of water does not change. After two minutes, there's two and a half gallons. After four minutes, there's still two and a half gallons. So that is a constant function. So this is scenario C. Okay, so I'm just going to bring in the explanation because I've said it and it takes a long time to write and it's tough to write with this pen. So I'm just going to copy and paste. Okay, so the expl explanation is the amount of water in the tub does not change over time. It remains constant at 2.5 gallons. So that is a constant function. Okay, number two. Let's look at the graph. Okay, so starting here, working left to right, like reading a book, as I go to the right, this is going down. So in other words, as time elapses, or as we go into higher values of time, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight minutes, as minutes increase, the amount of water in the tub decreases. So, and it has a starting value of 20 and then it's decreasing so if i go back and look at my scenarios c's already been used so this is being drained so this has to be b the only one that's being drained this is the only decreasing function so it's going to be b so i'll write that in here and the reason is right here the bathtub is being drained at a constant rate of 2.5 gallons per minute. So the amount of water is decreasing, which means that the slope of the line is negative. The graph of the function also shows that there are initially 20 gallons of water in the tub. Okay, here's the next scenario. We're starting at empty, we're starting at zero, and it's increasing, so we're filling the tub. And this one, we have to determine at what rate. So after two minutes, it looks like there's about five gallons of water. So after four minutes, maybe 10 gallons of water. And after six minutes, 15 gallons of water, somewhere around there. So it looks like two and a half gallons per minute, it seems. Two and a half, five, seven and a half, 10, 12 and a half, 15. Okay, so if I go back and look, the two that we have, a bathtub is filled at a constant rate of 1.75 gallons per minute, and a bathtub is filled at a constant rate of 2.5 gallons per minute. So I want to look at both of these last two scenarios, and which one is increasing faster, 
and that one is not at five yet but this one is so two and a half is the correct one so if i go back this third one is at two and a half gallons so that is d okay so i am going to call this scenario d So the explanation is the tub is being filled at a constant rate of 2.5 gallons per minute, which implies that the amount of water in the tub is increasing. So the line has a positive slope. Based on the graph, the amount of water is also increasing at a faster rate than in choice A, which is what we just discussed. So this is at a slower rate, but it's still increasing. So I'm going to call this scenario A, which was at 1.75 gallons per minute, I believe. 1.75 gallons per minute is A. Okay, so there are our four scenarios, and here's the explanation. A bathtub is being filled at a constant rate of 1.75 gallons per minute, so the amount of water is increasing. This implies that the slope should be positive. However, the rate at which the tub is being filled is less than the rate from choice B. So if we're comparing these two, they're both con constant rates of growth or filling. It's filling, it's increasing, and this one is filling faster. 2, 5, this one's only 2, and less than 5. Okay. Okay, here's number 2. It says, read through each of the scenarios and sketch a graph of a function that models this situation. A, a messenger service charges a flat rate of 495 to deliver a package regardless of the distance to the destination. So, if it's 10 miles, if it's 10 miles, they charge 495, which would be about here. Okay, five dollars, five cents less than five dollars. At 20 miles, well, guess what? Still 495. At 30 miles, 495. At 40 miles, 495. At 50 miles, 495. And they're out of business. You can't do that. But anyhow, this is a constant rate, so the graph of this would look just like that. No matter how far this package is being driven, the cost is $4.95. Okay, B, at sea level, the air that surrounds us presses down on our bodies at 14.7 pounds per square inch. For every 10 meters that you dive underwater, the pressure increases by 14.7 pounds per square inch. Okay, so this is depth below sea level. So as we are increasing in our depth, as we are going deeper, the pressure increases. So at zero, at sea level, we are at 14.75. And this is 20, 10 would be here, 15 would be right around, so 14.75 is approximately here. Okay. Okay, so for every 10 meters, the water increases by 14.7, so be careful with that. I'll get the calculator to show you this. So it's 14.7, not 14.75, 14.7, and if I'm going out to 20, then that'd be times two, because for every 10 meters, it goes 14.7. So every 20 meters, it'd be 14.7 times two. So I'm going to increase to 29.4 at 20. So 29.4 would be almost 30, which is about here. Okay, so now that I have two points, line up my ruler and try to be as accurate as possible with my line. Okay, so right about there. So there would be the graph of my line for pressure increasing 14.7 square inches every 10 meters. Okay, part C. The range, driving distance per charge on an electric car varies based on the average speed the car is driven. The initial range of the electric car after a full charge is 400 miles. However, the range is reduced by 20 miles for every 10 miles per hour increase in the average speed the car is driven. Okay, so if we have the car fully charged and we have driven zero miles per hour, then we have a full charge, which is 400 miles of 
distance we can travel. But it says the range is reduced by 20 miles for every 10 miles per hour. So if I go 20 miles per hour and it's reduced 20 miles for every 10, then I need to multiply that by 2 and it would reduce by 40. So at 400, 0, 400 is my starting charge. And then if I go 20 miles for every 10 miles per hour, so this is miles per hour, so 10 miles per hour would be here, it would drop from 40 to 400 to 380. And then when I get out to 20, it'd drop another 20 to 360. So my next point won't be right at 350, it'll be up a little bit at, at 360. Okay, so it's decreasing 40 every 20. It's decreasing 20 every 10. So then when I reduce, when I, when I drop that slope down, then this is the graph of my line. As far as the faster I drive, the, for, the, the less distance I can drive with my electric car. Okay, so if I'm going 100 miles per hour, I can only go just under 200 miles before I need to recharge. Okay, number three. The graph below represents the total number of smartphones that are shipped to a retail store over the course of 50 days. So at day one, none were shipped. At day 10, a little over 10,000 were shipped, and that is A. Okay. At day 20, then a little over 20,000 were shipped, and then it flattened out. Something happened here where they didn't ship any for this period of time. So it stayed, it, the, the amount didn't change. So it was a constant rate of shipping, I should say. And then it increases again. So C is up here. So A is increasing, B is laying flat, and then C is increasing again, but not as quickly as A was. So I'm just choosing the slopes or the rate of change for each letter value here. So this is increasing. This is flat, zero slope, no rate of change. And this is increasing, but not as fast as A. So it says, match each part of the graph, A, B, and C, to its verbal description. Explain the reasoning behind your choice. I. Half of the factory workers went on strike, and not enough smartphones were produced for normal shipment. So they're still producing, but it said not enough. So normal shipment, I guess, might be A. And it slowed here because some were on strike, so that would be C. Part two, the production schedule was normal and smartphones, smartphones were shipped to retail stores at a constant rate. Okay, so this is the normal pace. They're shipping out um, phones at a normal rate. And this is over here, this was the strike. So let me color code these. So let's put the strike in red. This is where they were on strike. Smartphones were still being produced, but some of the people were on strike, so not everybody was working, so not as many. So this is steeper. So if I draw that and then move it, then you'll see that it is steeper. So if I put that right there, look how many more smartphones would have been made if they were not on strike. So I'll put that back. And then finally, this is B. Okay. So this is A. Production was normal. Part three says a, detect, a defective electronic chip was found and the factory had to shut down. So no smartphones were shipped. So if I go back, that is obviously right here. No smartphones were being shipped. So at this point, day 20, there were 20, let's say 24,000 phones. And then six days later, or however many days later that is, there were still the same number of phones shipped, which was about 24,000. So none were shipped here. So that is B. Okay, number four. The relationship between Jameson's account balance and time is modeled by the graph below. Write a story that models the situation represented by the graph. Okay. Okay, there's no single answer that's correct in these. Everybody should have a different story, but you have to explain the story correctly. Your story should make sense. So let's start here. 
It says to write a story that models a situation represented by the graph. So we have an account and there looks like there's about $58 in it at day zero, the day we're starting. So for the first six days, the balance did not change. So we could say something like, oh, well, Jameson, um, didn't work. Because he was on vacation or he, I don't know, if he was on vacation, he might be spending money. So let's not say that. Let's say he was sick. and therefore didn't make any money for those six days. Uh, B says, when this when is the function represented by the graph increasing? Okay, we need to finish the story. So we're from here to here, that's first day six. But then on day six, his account shot up from six to one, six, 58 to $100 over about a day and a half. So then Jameson, oh, that's here. Then Jameson, worked two and one half days and made uh, if that's approximately 58 let's say he made forty two dollars and then over the next nine from nine and a half to fourteen a half a day one day two days, three days, four days, four and a half days, uh, Jameson then went on vacation and spent. And now it looks like it's about 75, so I'd say spent $25. Okay, so that's one story of many. Now it says, when is the function represented in the graph increasing? Well, it's increasing right here. So between day six and day nine. Okay, because this is nine right here, so that's there. And I said two and a half days, so it actually went from six to nine, so let's change that to three. I've got to watch my time and days here. It's going every other day. Okay, so between day six and day nine, the graph is increasing. What did that relate to in your story? Well, that was where he was working and made $42. Then it says, when is the function represented by the graph decreasing? Well, it's decreasing from day nine to day 14. How does this relate to your story? Well, that is where he spent $25 on vacation. Okay. All right. That is the end of lesson four. Review this lesson summary and go do your problem set.